have to knowingly and uh, willfully enter the uh, the plea with full understanding of the nature and, and cause of the charges against me. So I have a few questions. I have a question for you, sir, if you don't mind. I'll, I'll okay. try to be the judge today. Get your elbows off the bench, please. Okay. Turn around and stay in front, please. Mr. I thought we just stood at the time. table. That's fine, sir. You'll be right here with me. This won't take you all that long. The charge is speedy. Mm -hmm. And the allegation is that you were going 62 in a 45. And you're pleading with that, sir. I have a few questions. I didn't ask you that, sir. I asked you what you am, is, am I required to understand the nature and cause of the proceedings against you? Do you me? understand the speedy, sir? Am I required to understand uh, the I'm nature? Not guilty On whose behalf are you entering that plea, sir? On yours. Okay, so you represent me in these no, proceedings? Sir, I'm just not going to put up with it. I'll just have you enter a not guilty plea. I'm not entering a not guilty plea, like sir. I have some questions. The court. You don't question me, sir. Okay, so what just happened there? A lot transpired in a very short time. So what was going on is I was beginning to ask my questions to understand, you know, the rules of the... Uh, court of how this complaint process works, what my rights are, you know, under the law, uh, in order to make sure I understood the charges and uh, what, what actions were being brought against me. And uh, the judge didn't like that very much, and he actually entered a plea on my behalf. Now, all of the parties involved here are supposed to be separate without conflicts of interest. Now, if the judge is entering a plea on my behalf, that means that he's representing me. So if he's representing me and he's presiding over me, wouldn't that be a conflict of interest? The other thing is, pleas have to be entered in a, in a certain way. The Supreme Court has said that they have to be uh, knowingly, voluntarily entered with a clear understanding of the nature of the charge against me uh, and the penalties for the offense. So if I don't understand all of these things and I'm not doing this knowingly and willingly and voluntarily, um, it's not really a valid plea. So I, I wanted to make sure I was at that point. I, okay. If you want to talk to the prosecutor, take him to the prosecutor. I don't prosecute, sir. Okay, so the prosecutor can answer questions about these proceedings? Sure, it'd be very helpful. Okay. Having that problem. Great. Your record is being made here, sir. Records being made here. What does that mean, sir? You'll need to enter your plea here. Okay. So you go I wonder how the courts work in China. Now, at the end, he pawned me off on the prosecutor, and I asked if the prosecutor could answer questions about the procedures, and he said yes, which he has got to know if he is a judge that that is completely false. Uh, the prosecutor cannot answer questions about the court, and uh, he knew that he was pawning me off. Now, I think the reason that he wanted to get me out of there is because standing behind me was a room full of people seeing me up there questioning the legitimacy of the court and seeing me stand up and exercise an option other than what they've been told is available to them. And he wanted to put a stop to that. So he got me off into another room where he could keep me at bay until the courtroom could be cleared out. Here it is. Can you hear me all right? Yes. Um, I don't know that you had a chance to talk to the prosecutor. Mm -hmm. uh, I've looked at your paperwork here, mm -hmm. and uh, you told me down here that you wanted to plead no, not guilty. Uh, I mean, guilty. Is I, that what you want to do? Because I understand that there are a lot of questions that you can ask, mm -hmm. and I certainly want you to have the opportunity to do that. It might be best in your case, if you have those kind of questions, that you go to a lawyer or, or hire yourself a lawyer, or go ahead and, and if you want to, you can enter your plea to me, and we can act accordingly. We don't, in a pre-trial, spend a lot of time going over a lot of things. And I want you to understand this. I'm not trying to, to shove you around. I'm just trying to get you to understand that as a pre-trial that we have today, you stay where you are. What we're here for is to determine what your plea is going to be and then what we do from that point. And in order for me to plead, I am to understand the nature of uh, my, uh, my point is, do you have a copy of your, your complaint? I do. Then you know what the charge is. And 
There is no further explanation that comes from the bench. So I'm not to understand. Do you understand what I'm saying? I don't no, give. Sir, I don't well then, listen here. Okay. I don't give explanations of the charge. I'm I don't I'm get involved in that. Don't talk. Listen. Therefore, I am here today only for the purposes of taking your plea. I am not explaining the case. I'm not explaining the rights. Those are things that you get outside of you. So what is it you want to do? So if I understand it correctly, then this court does not recognize Hades Corpus? Because that sounds like what you're telling me. Well, let me tell you one. Let me tell you one more time what I do recognize today. All right, and then you lock in on that, and not all the things that you can think of. I am here today asking you to enter your plea to the matter with which you've been charged, and you have a copy of the citation, so you know that it's due, you know where it took place, and that's what the state has to prove against you. You have to prove nothing. Uh, his astuteness is only due to the fact that he's read a few books and documents, and that's really it. The law is actually very simple. It's the law society, the lawyers, the attorneys, the bar association, which is a union, and uh, you know the, the federal judges and the federalist types. You know they want to make it difficult. They want to make it. Uh, 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 like a like a pretzel you know tie in your your thinking in a knot and make it seem like it's just a, a wall of information that you have to learn in a university and then take an exam to make sure you know it enough to be able to go into the court and uh and save people from themselves because that's really all it is well what i want to suggest about sam's performance there is that <clears throat> you have rights under the constitution and you have rights as a sovereign individual the courts would like you to believe that you've given up all those rights through contracts that you've signed with the government. And the government's a corporation, and the corporation has policies that as an employee of the corporation you have to obey. What the plea, what's going on with the plea, the reason that the judge needs you to plea is because it's a contract you're entering. Just imagine it like, here's a contract I'm giving you, will you please sign it for me? And these are your only options to sign it. You don't have any options other than the ones that I give you. Is that true? Is that ever true? If somebody comes up to give you a, a contract, can you refuse the contract? Of course you can. But once you sign for it, you can no longer refuse it. So the, so the contract is, hey, we've got a court case today, and I'm telling you what the, what the, things, what, you know, what the charges are, and, the, and you signed a ticket, right? And the ticket is you're signing your contract into the system. So let's start with signing the ticket. What are we going to say about that? Well, uh, <clears throat> first of all, as I mentioned before, the uh, you know this is a private company, and um, the officers uh, of the company uh, act on behalf of the company to uh, gain your compliance. And what was happening in the courtroom there uh, was the uh, man who called himself Judge was explaining to Sam that, uh, you know, uh, he, he was very honest at one point in, in, in explaining that he, he's here, I'm here to hear your plea, and I don't uh, talk about your rights here. You don't, he basically said to him in so many words, you don't get your rights here, you get your rights outside of here. So he basically told him very honestly that he didn't have any rights in the courtroom. And when a gun is put to your head, uh, most people will sign anything, right? That's what we call under duress. But actually what I was referring to more is that when you receive the ticket, if you sign your name to it, it's assumed and presumed by the court system that you voluntarily signed your name. Did you? When the policeman pulls you over, are you signing the ticket voluntarily? If you had a choice, would you say, no, thank you, I don't really want a ticket today? I mean, if there was no repercussions for doing that, isn't that what you'd really do? Nobody would say, thank you very much, I needed this to re-educate myself so I would no longer be speeding or so I wouldn't come to a complete stop at the stop sign because from now on I'm going to come to a complete stop. Thank you for reprimanding me. And I will pay the, you know, the $100 as an uh, incentive to not do it again for myself.